Welcome to Future Role Model, a podcast that praises the unconventional and redefines what it means to be a role model. And today I have fellow Wisconsinite and amazing comedian Nate Craig. Just going by that intro, I'm perfect for this podcast. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I think anybody from Wisconsin is kind of perfect for it. <laughs> unconventional. <laughs> unconventional state. Unconventional. Um, we, we met, did we meet in Wisconsin? Was it at Comedy Club on State? Um, or was it no, somewhere? I think, I think we met out here. Do we meet out here? Okay. Yeah. It's hard to keep track, but, uh, you started comedy in Madison or in Chicago? I did in Madison. It was two clubs ago. There was, uh, now it's the, it's the current club. And then before that it was, um, across the street and upstairs. And then before that it was back across the street and downstairs. And yeah, that was, it was I, I feel like I remember the one ago because that's when Paul's club was at a different place. Right? Paul's Club used to be down the street. Yes. And I used to live right at Johnson and State when I was 19. You lived in Madison? I lived in Madison. I didn't do comedy. I wasn't doing stand up yet, but I lived above A Room of One's Own, that woman's sure. feminist bookstore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They sold my first CD on consignment. Stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, they were so feminist, though. Yeah. Well, you know what, man? That, they, that was before. That was uh, that was when it, feminism was normal. Still, <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. Yep. Can I say that as a woman? <laughs> now it's you getting might get a little in trouble. You, I, you know, <laughs> they're gonna ask you if I made you say it. No, I mean it, it's you know that's it's just a funny topic that I'll have like a conversation with people and you know, people don't really know what they're what they stand for. Like, they'll be like, yeah, I'm a feminist and men suck. I'm like, that's not what it is, <laughs> by the way. Do people actually say that to you? I mean, that, I don't know. One person has. When I when I generalize like that, it's usually just one person said it to me and it just stuck with me. <laughs> yeah. But how often do you play back in Madison? Um, I go back for the holidays. I'm doing, I'm doing uh, my Brink shows this year. You're spectacular, spectacular. I do those every, every holidays. I do the Brink and then I'll go back to Milwaukee. Um, to do shows, but other than that, I really don't do shows in Madison. I'll do like there's this great show at the Boss Meadery. I got to do. I got to open for Burr at the Orpheum. And, oh yeah, that's right. And then I got that's to, fucking awesome. And then a couple five years ago, I opened for him at the Barrymore, which is a place I did shows when I was younger. Like yeah, I, like my first theater shows as like a as like a twenty four, three, four year old. Oh my god! I did like I booked a bunch of Chicago that's, people up there. Yeah, and um, that's pretty massive for that age. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I thought, I mean, I was, you know, you know how dumb you are when you're that. Totally. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to crush this. I'm going to do this now. <laughs> I think when I, when I was 25, I played, um, do you know David Showman Freeman that does shows in Madison? Uh, well, no, I know I don't know him because I would never forget the name David Showman, Showman Freeman. Showman Freeman. I know. And I got connected to him. It was right after I moved to, um. LA and I was coming back for the holidays and he did this big show at the Monona Terrace in a grand ballroom huh. and you know and I did it and my grandparents came and I this was back when my stuff was pretty dirty I'm like staring at my grandpa while I'm talking about jizz and like this uh, thi this thing was like 500 people and it was uh, awesome oh you crushed oh yeah oh that's awesome yeah 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 well, I had makes, a but makes... it was it was a very like urban crowd and urban crowds uh -huh. love me for some reason uh -huh. I don't know why urbans and gays urban crowds and gay crowds you know why <laughs> Okay, I miss because in when I started in Chicago, that was how I got stage time in the yeah. beginning was the gays. Well, like jokes. Oh, gays. they just okay, like yeah. would put they would just be like, we don't have drag tonight. Can we put you on a show? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> fun. So, yeah, it was great. Where would you go up then? Because I uh, Scarlet was my like number one spot. They would let me headline. They would let me headline there and pay me well and give me a bottle of Grey Goose. A bottle. Yes. Whoa. You don't even get that now. Even it like in a, I shouldn't have been headlining at that point, but <laughs> let's just call it going last especially, and doing 25 minutes. <laughs> especially not with a bottle of Grey Goose in you. Dude, uh. that was how, um, that was how I almost didn't make it through my relationship like seven years ago. Uh -huh. Um, my, my fiance surprise brought his dad to that show okay, in Chicago <laughs> and I was fucked up. It was super bad. Oh, man. Um, how long have you been in Los Angeles now? Uh, I moved here in 07, so 11 years. Oh shit. Yeah. 
because 07 was when I was starting comedy in Chicago. Well, it's not stand up yet. But that's when I started sketching improv with Second City. Second City. Yeah. Uh, you and everybody else. Everybody. It's it's, a- I know it's not that cool anymore because everybody's. <laughs> it's on the resume. <laughs> it's on the res. And, you know, what is what was kind of your transition coming from like the Madison Midwest area out to Los Angeles? Um, I mean, I wasn't, I was, I had a good agent in Chicago as far as Chicago goes. And I was getting work in, I was working the road and I was also getting work as a, a, in theater. Yeah. Um, which I was, you know, like in my mind, I needed to be able to, I was, I was going to be on TV and movies and I needed to learn how to act and all this, whatever my ideas were about. Entertainment. How my career was going to go. <laughs> and um, so, you know, Chicago is a great town for everything. I mean, we just referenced, you know, one of the one of the best theaters in the country. And, um, and there's not many places with that kind of variety and and um, places to perform like that. I mean, what's it, like 400 theater companies or something absurd? You know, yeah. 200. Yeah. But like, that's a lot. And, uh, and, and so I was very much busy and um doing stuff that i was learning from stuff but i wasn't getting like auditions for like i didn't get the thing that made me move i was like oh i like i didn't get an audition for at the time it was uh aspen which is like the hbo aspen fest which oh, is like, yeah. it was aspen and montreal are the two big ones now now it's just montreal and then there's other festivals you know but, sure. like, but like those are the two big ones and there was no other festivals so like you had to audition for those and then i didn't get an audition for that and instead of being like well maybe i should be funnier <laughs> i was like well maybe, maybe I, should I should move, move. to LA. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, and so that's, that was, you know, and then, but we were doing, we did have, um, shows. There was like a bunch of us and we did like, you know, there's like a bunch of us, you know, we had like a video, Jordan vote Roberts who just, you know, he's world famous movie maker, director now, um, shot videos. And we had like a, we were doing shows at UCB on, in New York and LA. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it was, uh, you know, it was a bunch of us. It was like, you know, Kanane, Kumail, um, Jared Logan. Do you have uh, a bunch of those archived somewhere? Oh, they're up. No, they're, okay, they're I'm up. I'm sure they're on YouTube, but, um, you know, if they're definitely up on YouTube, I'm sure. Was if, it if, like, if they're not, it's because maybe Jordan took them down. Was it sketches? Yeah, it was, uh, well, it was, uh, um, it became a uh, mashup on Comedy Central. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so that, uh, my God, I want to started with this website. I want to find those. Yeah. They're fun. They're great. <laughs> I mean, they look good. You know, like Jordan's been always been talented and it was just like a bunch of, a bunch of us lunatics like yeah. you know, doing our bits, you know, and then we, you know, ran out and you know, I jump on top of a, would you go fuck with people in the, like in the city? I, I jumped on top of a Hummer that was parked on, Ash, you know, Ashland Ave. I, it was, there was all kinds of people, uh, Bryce put on a, on scrub scrubs and like was screaming out the back of a of an actual ambulance that yeah was like put, put, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god there, there there was um yeah there was some hilarious videos i mean no question no question i wish i would have been more forward thinking in that way because i used to i used to go out and fuck with people in the city all the time when i first started improv and i before i moved to chicago i had discovered online i don't know if you'd heard of improv everywhere Yeah, they're the like the New York guys and Uh they would just do like public kind of pranks, like basically like flash mobs, but for comedy instead Uh of dancing. And um, I was I was always trying to do shit like that in Chicago and didn't record any of it. But I I did have like a really shitty handheld camera that I would take like to New York and stuff. And I would just like record hanging out with people drunk at bars, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't record like the right stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that was uh, my archives are useless. (laughs) Content has taken on a new meaning. I know it really has. I didn't I didn't think about it that way. I, I, you know, I miss the days where we actually used to just experience life and not have to worry about filming it. (laughs) I still don't, I, I still don't fuck like that. I mean, yeah. I, if I'm enjoying myself, I'm the last thing I want to do is pull out my phone. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I have a no, I have a no phone policy at dinners always. 
because I feel yeah. like it's too easy. Um, but let's talk about growing up in Wisconsin because I don't get to powwow with a lot of other fellow Wisconsin comics. Yeah. What was... I what? was just I was just talking to my buddy Joe. There's this uh, hilarious kid, Joe Riley in Milwaukee. And he's a social worker, and he's also this. He's hilarious on Instagram. I, uh, I have to find him. Yeah, it's, he's hilarious. And I, we were just talking about people in Wisconsin. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, well, I'm I'm because, and I don't know what it was like for you growing up, but I feel like any of my friends, all of my friends are hilarious. Like any of my friends could have probably done comedy if they wanted to. They just didn't want to. So many funny, so many funny people. So many funny people. Yeah. So growing up, like what, what was your thing? What was your family life like? What was your friend's life like? How did you end up parlaying that into, into comedy? Well, I was always a fan of stand up. I just loved it. You know, who wasn't? I mean, I, I'm, I can't count how many times me and my buddies watched Eddie Murphy Delirious. Oh which, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know who said it. It was probably... John Roy was responsible for the Eddie Murphy delirious is responsible for like three generations of comedy. Oh, for sure. Five. hundred percent. I don't know how much, how many years it takes for a generation of comedians, I suppose 10, but, uh, <laughs> but maybe, maybe fewer. Um, in which case it's countless generations of comedians are yeah. delirious spawned. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I always loved it. And then, um, you know, there was a club, in Madison. So that just was kind of the next, the logic, it was tangible. Yeah. Did you become, when did you start performing? How old were you? Uh, I was, um, 20, 20, that's fucking young. 1998. But at least you were in Madison. I feel like if you, I feel like, I, I feel like it would be so scary to start stand up at 20 or 21 in a big city, but I know people that do it, but at least Madison is like a nice stepping stone, I feel like, because you can become a regular at a really good club. It's like I, an, everyone's favorite club. It wasn't then. It wasn't then. <laughs> yeah. What was it like back then? There was no, well, first of all, college night was, there was like me, Jim Hamilton, and like three or four other students were going up. Uh-huh. Then there was like maybe three or four like dudes living in DeForest or wherever they lived that <laughs> came in. DeForest. And then the crowds were like whoever they could paper the house with. Like sometimes. So it was just kind of slop. Yeah, sometimes it was just like 12 people. Sometimes it was 30 people. It's so crazy to think about that because Comedy Club on State now is one of the like it's hard to it's hard to get spots there even if you're from there. I mean, you can't. I, I only can play there maybe like twice a year. But usually it's just a guest spot, you know. Yeah, or I, like a. I haven't gone up there in years. Yeah, it's hard. It's they have like a crazy rotation, and they like it's really hard to get in. I just don't. You don't like. I don't really have a good relationship with them. Oh, interesting. I headlined there for like over a decade. Yeah. Yeah. But you do. I know your Brink Lounge show is amazing, and I wish I could have done it last year. Um, but I, do you know I'm getting married at the Brink Lounge next year? You are. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Cause I, when I was looking for venues, I was like, dude, here's four requirements. It has to be a place that doesn't require anything. <laughs> Cause I just yeah. want it to be like couches, bar. Great. It's Wisconsin. It's a you perfect You know, the people spot. I grew up with are like, it, I, they're just going to get really fucking hammered. Like that's what our wedding is going to be. So I'm like, I just need a, play, a stage. And the night before we're doing a roast of the bride and groom. So on the same stage that you do your show, Fun. we're doing a comedy roast the night before, and then we're going to get up hung over the next day and get married on that stage and then just walk into the room next door and get <laughs> fucked up all day. And like, that's, that um, to me is a great Wisconsin wedding. That is a perfect Wisconsin <laughs> wedding. Is your husband from Wisconsin? He's from Chicago. Chicago. All right. Yeah. So he knows what he's getting into. Yeah, exactly. Um, and where in Chicago is he from? He's from, he's from the Burbs. He's from Crystal Lake, Illinois. Okay. But we met in Chicago because he went to school at, oh my God, what was the name of this school? It was on the, it was on the Kimball Brown line all the way up at the Kimball stop, uh -huh. some tiny little like private college. And he was the quarterback and went there for four years and Hot. did the whole thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you should and know then, the name of the school. I know. How do I not remember it? Prairie Ridge? No, that was his high school. <laughs> Something. I That's don't fucking right. park. Get it right for the roast. Yeah, something. Um, but yeah, so we're going to just get, it's going to be like a fucking shit show. But the Brink Lounge is like one of my favorite spots. Yeah, it's great. And the bar's perfect. The bar's huge. Uh -huh. That's going to, your wedding will, 
will flood that bar and then uh and then there's there's other spots to go like upstairs it used to be a huge that used to be that used to be the old buy sell shop <laughs> uh, my dad always used to take me down to but oh, uh, it's dang. this beautiful big building it's yeah, a, you know, it's one huge. Of the older buildings downtown madison and uh they did a really nice job with it. I actually know the owner's name, Larry Walsh. He did a nice job with the uh, developments. And um, hmm. yeah, so I, I mean, I, I love working with them. I've done, we did, I've done my benefit at the High Noon Saloon. And then, you know, the Brass Ring always donates to to the benefit that I do for the Aaron Meyer Foundation, which is a local. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Local charity for, uh, for um, college age uh Men and women battling drug and alcohol dependency. So yeah, that's kind of like my my hub right there, man. I love that whole facility. That's cool that you give back to a charity that that helps people that are battling drug and alcohol dependency. Um, I because uh, I it was, did you choose that on purpose? Like, it was chosen by uh, Tom Farley, Chris Farley's brother. He used to run the oh, Chris Farley wow. Foundation. Yeah, I used to do shows with them, and then the far the Farley Foundation kind of. I mean, they gave all their money away. Yeah. Um, and uh, because you know Tom's the best and the family's the best, and mm -hmm. um, and they and they uh, they did all the hard work that they could, and 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 now they all are are focused on other things individually. I think they maybe function as a family in some some sort of uh, unit. Yeah. But uh, but back then, um, they were nice enough to have have me work with them on a couple of things, and they did the comics come home, and they put me on that, and that was awesome. And and then they, and then this benefit they so. Tom chose uh, the Aaron Meyer Foundation because um, uh, Aaron, the young man that passed away, he was actually he had gone through recovery. And he was taking kids to, uh, you know, other young adults took recovery and he got yeah. into a car accident, um, which is a, a sad story, but, a, uh, you know, a, a really wonderful, beautiful um, story if you think about it. And he went to their same high school. Oh, gotcha. And he went to Edgewood. And so that was, there was kind of a connection there. Um, and then I just kept him because I know I've gotten to know Aaron's dad, Tom. He's the best. He always comes and hangs out and he's, yeah. you know, um, he's just a, he's just a smooth, cool ass motherfucker. And, uh, Fuck yeah. and so that's, I've just kept it. Do you drink anymore or do you not? I definitely drink. Okay. I was like, I didn't know yeah. if that was a thing. No, I have a, I have a very comfortable relationship with alcohol. Okay. At times it's, it's been too much. Yeah. But I, that's the business we're in. Dude. And that's, I, Anytime I hear somebody, because we live in LA and people do these like cleanse weeks or whatever, I'm <laughs> like, I've never done that in my fucking life. Uh -huh. I've never not eaten solid food for any given day. Uh -huh. And I, and any day that somebody's like, do you want to get a drink? I'm like, yeah. Like, I really don't restrict myself <laughs> and I probably should. <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I've taken the foot, uh, my, my foot off the gas as far as whiskey goes. Um, you know, yeah. if I'm, if I've, uh, if I feel like I've earned it, you know, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll I'll go in for whiskey, um, but def I definitely I, wine with food is goddamn biblical. So Dude, I'm, I'm not exactly. gonna not drink wine with food. I mean, um, you know, if they're serving it, uh, but uh, <laughs> but I've I've gone in for more IPAs now lately, which yeah. is probably the wrong approach as you get older. Like if you really want to. Here's, Keep it tight. You might want to stay away from the IPA. You know what? No, I look at it differently because there's such a kombucha craze right now. Uh -huh. And kombucha is just fermented. It's a fermented beverage. I feel the same way. But and I think sometimes, beer right, is right, that. I hear you. I hear you. But I think anything like any Bud Light, any light beer just strips your guts down. And yeah. some... Some heavier beers with like what you're talking about, like your natural bio, uh, yeah, bio positives, <laughs> might uh, upset my stomach sometime. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you do Belgians though? I drink a lot of Belgian like quads and I don't shit. Like that shit. And I, I, I think they're so in sours. Oh my I god! I like a sour. Get out! I love I'll me drink a sour. those all fucking night. I drink a sour. I like, but other than that, I want some bite to my beer. I'm I'm like one of those. I'm like one of those like I guess like. I guess it's a trend. Like I love talking of I love talking to like brewmasters or like bartenders who are like just roll their eyes at people that love IP. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's just like that's like the thing. And well, they're like, it's all people it's buy. It's like Yeah. I guess I like them though. I'll drink a stout. Like if it's like if I have like if I really am like Yeah. If I'm if you're really feeling squirrely. If I'm on if I'm on if I'm on empty and I got a I got a plate of pasta in front of me or something like that, I'll, yeah. I'll drink a stout. Yeah. You know, like that's really 
really delicious and some of them get real like actually taste like chocolate that's fun yeah which city did you grow up right in madison yeah i went to i went to west you went to west my mom went to west nice it's the best one my mom went to west and then moved to chicago like her senior year but in madison i like because i really i didn't really know what people's life was like growing up in madison because i was in stoughton Mm -hmm. so i hung out with people from mcfarland in oregon sure but i didn't quite hang out with the kids from madison because that was way too cool (laughs) madison kids are way too cool like what did how did you guys party growing up or like what was that what was that whole scene like oh we partied i mean that's talk about on unhealthy (laughs) <laughs> alcohol consumption dude because that's wisconsin period yeah. well, i had my first fake id at 16 oh that's aggressive yeah i was buying kegs a lot of them there there was this place for, for other children <laughs> <laughs> i used to do that too i had my first fake at 18, i've been though. buying beer for children for decades <laughs> If you're a child too, I feel like it's not even bad. I used to have this eyeglass council in my car Uh um, that I would hold, like I would buy cases of beer for younger kids and then tell, tell them how much it costs and they'd all pull together. They're like $5, Mm -hmm. but the, you know, the case would be like 14 bucks and I'd stash the other 15 bucks away and like. I I raked it in. I had like hundreds of dollars in tips in my eyeglass compartment oh, at a, all times. You had a business. Going I had on. a business going. I was totally yeah. looting. <laughs> I never, um, I never really like had a hustle like that. But I, it definitely was worth its weight in gold as far as like social. As far as like getting the house cup when you went places, bless you. The house cup and like yeah, like just being able to you know. It's just, you know, it's a small town as is, but like it's any small town, there's, you know, and and also your high school age, you know, dudes, you know, there's all kinds of like, we never had to, we never had to fight with anybody because we brought the beer. Yeah. So you were the cool kids. We were the cool kids for, I mean, at least at the end, I was a real dipshit for, (laughs) who am I kidding? I'm an absolute What was your dipshit phase? Because. I mean, I had a real awkward phase. Um. I mean, I was a, I was a, I was a fat kid for like fifth grade through seventh grade. And then I like went through a awkward phase. Like I was okay for eighth grade and then freshman, sophomore year in high school were pretty bad. Really? Yeah. Pretty bad. I would love to see photos of, I like, I love seeing photos of people that I would never guess that it was them. Gangly, (laughs) you know, braces, gangly. Yeah. Didn't, you know, wasn't a, a, hadn't made the hockey team yet yeah that did not have my fake id wasn't able to buy beer for children yet and you you just weren't cool yet was not cool at all that was my trying way too hard to like make people like really wanted people to like i still want people to like me what the fuck yeah that's why we do yeah that's why we do what we do i mean it was imagine and the the desperation as like a as like a kid was just with nothing to offer the world yet palpable nothing to offer the world did you start drinking when you were like 16 would you say uh, started drinking, I mean, just freshman year. I don't, I didn't drink or smoke pot in 14? middle school. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't either. But then the second we hit high school, it was like, we, this is what we do now. Yeah. This is like, this is what you have to do. If you don't do this, don't even look at us. It was exactly the same for us. Yeah. And we partied hard. Yeah. Like we went from doing nothing to like shotgunning an entire case of beer in a night, like each yeah. of us. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty nuts. What did, what kind of parties like what were your because we in Stoughton, we mainly we'd party on boats if we we had like three friends with boats. That's fun. So we would do that in the summer. We'd party in barns. We'd party in cornfields. We'd party in garages. Boat sounds like a good <laughs> boat sounds like a good way to get an underage drinking ticket. Yeah, it should have been, but I never got an underage drinking ticket there. But I got I got an underage drinking ticket in the woods. I got an underage drinking ticket in a closet. I got an underage drinking ticket. <laughs> Hold on, in a- <laughs> outside the what was outside the closet? <laughs> the cops found me. The cops. The cops are coming from inside I the was, closet. I was hiding. It was oh my god! It was his house party. At this chick Mandy's house, and it was this old Victorian her house. Her parents' house. Yeah, it was her parents' house. Uh, like, are we talking downtown? It was in high Stoughton? school, like in the in the country, 
in the outside of outside of downtown. So there was like cornfields surrounding it and there was a barn and she had like this old Victorian house. It was huge. And the cops showed up and M- Mandy. Yeah. Good old Mandy. I don't want to say her last name because, you know, well, who cares? It was Mandy Nelson. She there was, was like she was the dopest Mandy, Mandy. There was a lot of Mandy's. She won best party and worst party because so many people got arrested uh-huh. at this. I think this particular party. Uh-huh. But I found this closet on the second floor and it was really creepy, but I was drunk enough where I didn't care. It was a closet that was just so full of shit that I like dived inside of the shit and mm-hmm. hoped that I was covered enough where they wouldn't find me. They found you. And I heard the, the I heard noises for like an hour and I just fell asleep in there and then they found me in the closet. <laughs> so I got one drinking ticket in the closet. Uh, I had so many underage they, drinking tickets. They, they didn't even need to look in that. <laughs> That's why it took them an hour. That They were like, there's at least three high school children in there. Yeah. We don't, we'll, we'll get to them last. Did you get underage tickets ever? I never got a drinking ticket, but I did get a fake ID ticket. Oh, okay. I, got, I eventually got a fake ID ticket. I got my, t- I got my, my ID taken from me. We were on the way back from Beastie Boys at the Mecca. Of course you were. We went to see Beastie Boys <laughs> at the Mecca, which is in Milwaukee where the Bucks used to play. Oh, uh, uh, of course. And Beastie Boys. We smoked weed all night and and we got so drunk. But then we, we were going to stay in Milwaukee. We had it all set up. We were going to stay in Milwaukee. And then we like the B- a Beastie Boy concert back in the mid '90s was. Just, I mean, it was, we I sweated through my clothes. Like we were in the mosh pit the whole time. Yeah. And like we got out of there, we're like, I I mean, there's negative alcohol in my blood system at this point. Like we're let's dr- well, let's we'll go back to Madison. Yeah. And so we did, but um, we just like kept smoking weed. And then my buddy for some reason was like speeding. And we got pulled over for speeding, and then there was just fucking smoke poured out of the car. Oh, my God. And then we had a bunch of <laughs> beer in the trunk, and um, I for some, I don't know what I – oh, I put my fake ID in the glove box because I didn't want to lose it at the concert. Mm-hmm. And I forgot about it. And then the cop searched the car, and this dork cop – Came oh, up to me. I just cops. remember his voice. His voice was, he was such a fucking nerd. It was in like, um, where's the pine cone? <laughs> he was such a fucking nerd. Where's the, where's the pine cone? It's in, uh, it's in, uh, river. What's it called there? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, God damn it. Anyway. Um, the, the bar, right? No, the pine cone, the rest of the little truck stop, the diner. Oh, the truck. Oh, okay. It's on 94, just between Madison and Milwaukee. Oh, right, yeah. The, right, right, right. Like, like 20 minutes outside of it. Yeah. We're almost, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were so close to we were home. So close. And we could pull over and he goes, Watertown. Yeah. Pulled it. And he goes, <laughs> uh, he goes, he just walks up to where on the, we're sitting in the, on the side of the, it's cold. It's, I don't know. It was like, Mar- you know, March in Wisconsin. So it's like 38 and raining or whatever sure we're i'm already soaking soaking wet t-shirt pants this guy loved busting these kids for weed so can you imagine if you had if can you imagine if you got put in jail for weed yeah how upset you would be yeah and for a joint like it's like it's fucking grass Uh, anybody for a pound of weed i don't just the way that that this country looks at that is so Fucking stupid. I know. And I, because I'm still mad to this day (laughs) for having to sit on the side of a road. (laughs) Yeah. For 20, he probably made us sit out there for like 45 minutes while his, while this dork (laughs) fucking (laughs) ransacked this car. And then here's how this is what, uh, this is what a fucking nerd this guy was. He comes up, first of all, he comes up to me with, with my, with my fake ID, which was back then those licenses were so shitty. You could, you could literally heat them up on, Unpeel them. I didn't do it, but I know this is how they did it. You unpeel them and you cut the letters and you swap the numbers. Yeah. You cut. You, oh yeah, you people the, used to do it all the time. And um, so I got that done. He came up to me and he it was like he he thought I was the fucking kingpin of the goddamn fake ID <laughs> society. <laughs> you were he, running a ring the underground, and he fucking comes up to me and he goes, he puts it in my face. I'm on the side of the road. He comes down to me, puts, shines the fucking flashlight in my face, pulls up my fake ID, and says, "You will be cited for this." Great ass fuck. Thank you. <laughs> you could just give me the ticket. You don't have to put on this show. Yeah. Oh, nobody's oh, around. You found it in the glove box that I forgot it was in there because I'm too fucking stoned and I'm 18, you fucking dork. <laughs> and then here's what else this fucking dork. He, he goes into the trunk. He finds our beer. We have like a 12 pack of beer in the trunk. And he's like, I, I, sw- I shit you not, a grown man. 
that lives in Wisconsin was trying to chip away the fucking t- the beer caps. He was trying to open them with like just on the road. Why? Because he didn't know Dump how beers worked. He didn't know how beers worked. <laughs> so I had to be like, I had to be like, give them to me and open them with my keys. And oh then, my and god! Then hand them to him, so he poured it out, and then I opened all these beers with my key, just a fucking house key. Yeah, I'm opening the beers for this fucking nerd. What a! I still hate. I wish I would. I wish I could remember his name, dude. I, I, w- I would look him up, and I'd and I'd and I'd follow him online just to just to. And it was a Madison cop. Still a, no, he was a he was like a in betweener, like a state patrol. Yeah, he was like a. He was oh, like those a, are the a, worst. He was like a highway patrol guy, you know, out of uh, the the court. I had to show up in court in Watertown, like later a couple months later some shit or else you know i was gonna get points off my life i think i still did get points off my license but whatever i i just we got busted by a state trooper once four of us it was it was fourth of july and i was 19 didn't know how to open beers yeah i mean that's i learned how to open beers with my teeth when i was 16 yeah i can still do it i've been doing it for a long time (laughs) I, I always bite them right that, off. That always makes me out. cringe. I know. I've, I've done it before, but that's yeah. It's definitely not safe, but it's no way. To I do it. Teeth. We got we got um this four of us had rented this campsite right at Lake Kaganza on sure. on fucking Fourth of July, and we were just sitting at a bonfire drinking beers, and the state trooper shows up. Pulls us all into like this, the parks office, gives us all tickets, takes all of our beer. And we're like, we already rented this campsite for the night. Why don't you just let us, we're not making any noise. We're just hanging out. We were just going to get fucked up and go to sleep in our tents and it came and just ruined the night. And I remember getting really mouthy. I got, I got mouthy with cops a couple of times. I got in trouble in Madison for that. Uh, Cause I got so annoyed that they like ruined our night. We were in their, uh, their trooper's office and there was a stuffed horned owl. And I wouldn't let go of the fact that it was endangered. And I was like, you guys are giving us tickets, but you're stuffing endangered animals for your fucking <laughs> office. And, like they were, they did not like I that. Love that. I they love did that. not like That's that. That's funny. Actually, I, <laughs> I, I did get busted again for a fake ID. Uh, me and my buddy. Tried oh to, shit, we, twice. Me, me and my buddy. When college. Me and my buddy Dave, we tried to, uh, you know, the red, the big red gym down there by the student oh, yeah. union. So that's yeah, got yeah. that nice big back uh, fire escape staircase uh, that mm-hmm. you can crawl up on. And like, so anyway, we were at the terrace. I was like, I got a place. And we took like, we took like our beers and we were going to go smoke weed up on that fire escape. Of course, these bike cops are watching that thing. You know, they're uh, just sitting there just waiting for somebody to fuck cops. up. And they gave us tickets. And then we, we, we were walking and the, we saw the bike caps on State Street and they had, you know, they had their fucking uniforms and we just started burying them for their bike shoes. <laughs> we're like, is that, you already spent our fucking money on your fucking bike shoes? And we just were, I mean, just belting at these cops, heckling these cops. So, so at that point we were just so, we were so pissed about our little, it, it, it was, in that situation, they just gave us a citation. There was no, you know, but they could have, I think he, I could have gotten way worse for that. Oh, hell yeah. For that fake ID, but yeah. Yeah, whatever happened to cops looking the other way? I know, with kids, especially if you're just like drink. I can understand if you're like damaging stuff, but the the worst arrest I ever had was at Mifflin Street. Uh Uh-huh. Did you ever party up at Mifflin Street Block Party? Of course. And they would they would rent buses to arrest people. They arrested so many people at Mifflin. See, man, back in the day, though, that's what I'm talking about. Like back... um, you know, I was in college in the mid, or I mean, I was in high school in the mid nineties and we would go down there every year. And then my freshman year in college, I think is when Mifflin street had to stop for a couple of years. Cause yeah. there, there was that riot. Yep. I was there at that riot. I mean, they talk about dumb things I've done. I was in a tree and there was bottles flying. I was just like, this is cool. I'm gl- so lucky. I don't, didn't break my orbital bone. Seriously. Um, but before that, you, it was like, it was literally like, the front yards are hot lava. If you step in the street, they can arrest you. But yep. if you don't, they can't arrest you. Like that was shit we said to each other. I'm a 17 year old with a 40. With faking hot lava. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? The lava. lava? <laughs> safe. You're safe in the grass, bro. Yeah. Like what? And it was just, it was just the cops' discretion. They, well, they were just like, we don't, we don't want to film out a thousand drinking tickets yeah even though that you know that's and that's the difference like now like cities need that kind of that they need that revenue stream 
Yeah, of course. No, they're not, all of them are underfunded. So, no, you know. Well, when I got arrested too, I had just turned 21. So cops, I thought I was safe. Cops have to be dorks, extra dorks, extra hyper dorks. dorks. <laughs> because you won't fund school lunches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had this lady, but the lady that arrested me hated me and she got us for no glass or glass in a no glass zone, which I didn't even know was a thing. No glass. We were zone. we were so exact we were so happy to have purchased glass rolling rock bottles oh. and entered Mifflin Street block party with glass rolling rock bottles and have we got you? arrested immediately. By the way, rolling rock, such a great beer back in the day. Yeah. Have you tried it recently? No. Has it gotten shitty? It just gives me a, a real bad headache. I'm sure. I tried and tried because I was real partial to that green bottle. Oh, yeah. Man, that, that, to me, that might as well have been. I don't know what it was about the green bottle, but it was very attractive. I also liked, uh, also liked um, what do I want to call it? Lowenbrow. Lowenbrow's got a fun bottle. Oh, I don't know Lowenbrow. Lowenbrow. I don't know Lowenbrow. It's the blue label with the... With the uh, the the golden dragon, the like oh, real animated oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. fingery golden okay, dragon, yeah. you know, like just 2D kind of Yep, I know it now. Outline. Well. We would do St. Pauli Girl a lot. We would do Line and Kugel. If you were at a good party, you got Line and Kugels. That was when you knew like you were at a rich kid's house. Line and Kugels. Line, if somebody That's had a, a Liney's barrel, you were like, yeah, somebody's mm. getting fucked tonight. Mm. <laughs> Word up, Line and Kugels. That was the good stuff. We it, drank, man, I would buy barrels of pig's eye. I would drink, I would... By, I mean, old Milwaukee cases of old Milwaukee. Remember oh, those, yeah. I don't know if you if they did away with them, but they used to have old sturdy. You didn't just recycle the bottles. You recycled the boxes. The boxes were like we built furniture out of those old old Milwaukee boxes. Those were, were like they were like they were like ha half cardboard, half wood. Like they were like no way shiny old like they've had two. The top was like a two part like it folded from each side. It closed and opened like this, like a like, like a liquor cabinet. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it was great. Those old all beer should are, come like that. Yeah, th no, those were great. That, that was uh, and then you would take the fucking recyclables back after the recyclables. The case cost you six dollars and thirty cents for a case of old Milwaukee. Six, you heard it right, friend. Six thirty, you would take the case back and get and get you know. You get your. You get money back. You get oh yeah, you get your one ninety back for the case. Fuck yeah! yeah. They, wanted the, they wanted the bottles. They also wanted the box. Oh my god! Yeah. What a great business. Yeah. You just get to empty the product and re re recycle. I guess it's like the best form of recycling. They were taking it. Now easy. they only do that with juice bottles, and I'm like, I don't drink juice. <laughs> Where's yeah. the beer? Did you guys mostly? I mean, was that was that your limit of getting in trouble? Was that like to do with partying or did you get into any other oh mischief? i mean people got busted for mushrooms and weed and coke and acid um i never got busted for drugs um are you a shroomer did you shroom when you were younger oh yeah yeah uh, yeah well uh, once a season that was my rule once a season mm -hmm. is that so you don't go overboard I mean, I definitely did it more. Yeah. <laughs> that I've, was, I've never I, done sorry, shrooms yet. At least once. A I'm scared to hallucinate because I think I would, I think I would really do fucked up things. <laughs> oh man. No, it's, it's not, it's not like that. <laughs> I, I will shroom at some point in the near future, but you know, I haven't done it. Yeah. Do it. Mushrooms is the best. Mushrooms yeah. is the best drug. Besides alcohol, mushrooms is the best drug. Uh, yeah. You don't see different things. You see things differently. That's in well, in Madison, I'm quoting myself from high school. <laughs> That's what you you wrote that down. I wrote that down when I was in high school. I think I was a sophomore in high school. Two of my best friends decided to shroom for the first time, and so we were at their brother's house in Madison. And I didn't. I just got drunk while they were shrooming, and I documented the whole thing on paper what mm -hmm. they were saying. And I still have that an entire notebook of shroom journaling. Oh, I'm sure you were a lot of fun that day. I fucked with them so hard. Like they were, they thought that the basement was like satanic. And so I just kept doing like fucked up things to make them think the basement was haunted. And it was, and I came inside at one point with a, with a street cone on my head. And I think everybody had like a heart attack cause they didn't, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't understand what character I was. You gotta do mushrooms, man. Yeah, I know. I really do. Yeah. Mushrooms are great. I've been enjoying Molly too much in the recent future oh. or recent past, I guess. Um, not yeah. very often, but like. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've done more often than not. I've done all of them, but uh, but mushrooms is the best. You know what's actually the best is some the liquid acid nowadays is never uh, done. The best. What like why like why? It's just the best. Uh, it's, my it just opens you all the way up, and it's 
there's no. Like, do you feel when you've done that stuff? Because I feel like, I feel like I would have a really amazing trip. There's no, trip there's no come down sometime on Molly. There's a come down. Yeah. Or, or, on, or on ecstasy of varying degrees of yeah. purity. There's like a, you know, it's like, that's why they call it rolling. Like crashing it the next real day. Good, and mm-hmm. then you're like, oh my God, is this going away? And oh my God, it's not going away. And oh my God, is Liquid this going Liquid acid. So is it like a dropper? Yeah. They just put it on something. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I need to, I need to see, I need to do a lot more hallucinogen stuff and just maybe this time I can video it, <laughs> see actually what my experience looks like to other people. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about that. I just, I just, I mean, yeah, if you want, whatever you want, that's the thing. You won't really care. Like no. it's, it's just, it's just like, it's, there's no hallucin- hallucination. I'm maybe if it's like, if you're, if it's a part of your brain that you, you know, that you haven't accessed in a while, or if it's just kind of out of context for you, mm-hmm. you know, however you get clear headed, you know, whether it's a cup of coffee and a walk on a sunny day or whatever, you know, then, and you feel like you've, you've really kind of, uh, you settled yourself and your thoughts are clear and, and, you know, and that is your kind of moment, your, zen. your mom, momentary, uh, uh, Zen and, and then you move on and to the, to your regular rat race. And you forget about, you know, how clear headed you were on that afternoon. Oh, yeah. Um, if that's if it's been a while since you've had like a moment of uh, clarity or peace, um, you know, uh, maybe, you know, all of a sudden out of nowhere on a night out with your friends at a bar, it will be out of context for you. And so you'll start fo- fixating or fo- focusing on certain things and that'll make yeah. you feel like you're hallucinating. Um, but for the most part, man, I've never really outside of like light kind of being uh, extra bright or noticing like halos. Um, you yeah. know, I remember being, I went, I took um, liquid acid when I was, we went to see Page Plant in Milwaukee when they toured. Oh, nice. That, that reunion kind of yeah. half Led Zeppelin tour. Yeah. And I remember um, that was real strong drugs. Uh, my buddy, <laughs> my buddy Yuri, we, we were out, we were driving out of town. We drove downtown. We drove down to, uh, to Mifflin Street. His sister lived down on Mifflin and he was like, I'll be right back. And he walked out with a rocks glass full of water and he was like, take a sip of this. And he gave it to all of us. And, and I mean, it was good. It was just water? Yeah. Well, there was acid. Oh, the acid was in it. Yeah. I was like, cause I, cause I've fallen in love with weird beverages on Molly a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We know the acid was in the water and then it kicked in like right as you know, right about time we got outside of Milwaukee and we got there and we all got, we, cause it was two, we were in two cars Yeah. and we all got out of the cars. We're looking here. We're like, this is on. And we went in there and I remember the, the, so we were, we had shit seats. We were way up at the top of the Bradley center, but like looking down at a, at a stadium, a dark, you know, however many seat 15,000 seat stadium like that you know the 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 walkways out to the tunnels yeah you know out to the concessions yep we're all you could see the they were all like regu- emanating they were emanating a little bit they were regular lit and so there was a halo around each one and i that was to me a hallucin that qualifies i think still as, as a like small hallucination. A hallucination i remember the one of the one of the first strongest times i did mushrooms i i would see you know, you know we were out at the school forest out past, um, I don't even, wouldn't even couldn't remember how to get there past like, um, Mount Horeb. Oh yeah. Off of, uh, what's that? 51. Yep. And my parents lived off 51. And so those are nice fun. That whole Southwest corner of Wisconsin. There was was so much gray area to like smoke weed and drive in. It was just the best. Rolling Hills. We had had buddies that we had two buddies that had cottages out there, you know, their families had land out there, you know, um, we, that we, that's where we, we had a, we drank a bunch of beer out, out off. We drank a bunch of beer out off 51 there. Yeah, we and, did. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, what, f- oh yeah. So we're in the, and we were waiting for this, these mushrooms to kick in and, and we thought they weren't going to kick in. So we smoked a bunch of weed and then all of a sudden, bang. And I started seeing faces, <laughs> you know, yeah. just picking faces out of stuff. You know, I mean, you could see a face here if you wanted to look at it, you know, like for sure. Here's the I, eyes. I see that all the time. Here's the eyes in this wood. puckering and then it's got some fucked up thing on its forehead, you know, like, you, <laughs> but on drugs, you maybe would just see kind of rearrange stuff a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You focus on different like things. Like Picasso. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You turn into a real artistic genius. Genius. <laughs> And these solutions. That cheese is a is a painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you say? Can you remember like a defining funny moment with you and your friends that made you think, oh, maybe I could do this for a living? Was there a moment like your aha moment? Oh, but you about comedy? Yeah. I you're talking about doing mushrooms. For a living. That too. Mush- mushrooms for a living could be an option. <laughs> um, I uh, 
Oh, uh, well, with my friends, no. I mean, my, my friends' moments where I was like, I'm going to do stand-up comedy because clearly I'm uh, the, funniest, fucking genius. the funniest person in this room. <laughs> yeah, but clearly I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an all-out genius. I, I, um, <clears throat> the moment I thought that I could do comedy for a living, I guess, I mean, I was wrong. <laughs> but uh, um, but I don't know. I, w I won I won a contest uh, to in the, on campus, and then I got to be like the house MC for a while. Oh shit! Cool. Yeah. Back back when, bef two, two clubs like ago. before you did stand up full time. Well, well before yeah, yeah. you did stand up, I was it was I hadn't even left Madison. This yeah. was before this was before I even got to Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. So I hadn't even really worked. Once I then once I got because it, it was a uh, it was a it was a Yoda room so they they had their at that point the the funny business agency booked you know I don't know God knows how many clubs so mm -hmm. and one nighters and shit so you could you know you could you'd be like hey I'm working I'm like the house MC here at one of your clubs so like I should probably like you should probably like put me on TV yeah and, uh, oh and, yeah I know that mentality and then at uh, young age and then uh, <laughs> um. I don't know. I just started working the road a little bit more and more out of Chicago and then, yeah, you know, but I mean, yeah, there was probably several moments like that, but they were all wrong. Yeah. It's not, it's not until way late. It's not until actually you're, you know, that was because I, not, I, it's not until all your bills are paid for a decade. Oh, you're, you're, for sure. I mean, nobody, nobody realizes how many jobs you have to have to like hold it down for the longest fucking time. Or just how much work you have to do as like stand up to well, like actually well, yeah. get to the point where. The where best, it's like sustainable and, and reliable. The best thing I was told in Chicago still was get 10,000 hours of stage time in, um, which is what, which is what I hustled my first couple of years to do just so I would feel comfortable with who I was. But my first. Whoa, do you think you're there? I said, I don't know if I'll ever feel like I'm there, you no, know, but I mean, I'm just saying 10,000. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're for 10, sure. Hours? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been doing it 20 years. I don't even know if I'm 10,000. Yeah, you hours. would be. Yeah. I mean, I include like stage because I because when I started, I was at Second City doing a lot of the monologue shows. Yeah. So that's how I ended up learning that I like had some stories oh, to any talk stage, about. Any stage minute. I counted. I counted stage oh, minutes I'm, I'm up at, there too. I'm at, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Because otherwise, I mean, it yeah. takes forever to get that amount of time in stand up. But my first, my I, I might be right at ten thousand stand up. If yeah. I, if, I, if I sat down and did the numbers, I I've, and probably probably close. I'm 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 pretty close. I might be over it now, but. But if with with uh, sketch improv and theater, I'm I'm maybe up towards like fifteen or twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was doing is just kind of parlaying it all into each other because one kind of fed into the other. But the first gig I was ever paid for, which I shouldn't have been paid for, I was paid like four hundred bucks for this corporate gig to MC it, and I hadn't ever done stand up yet, but I knew I had wanted to, so I used it as an opportunity to try to write what I thought was the funniest stuff. But I got so drunk beforehand because I was so nervous and everybody at the event was really hammered nice. and nobody would listen when I even got up to the mic. Like I couldn't even MC it, let alone right. try out any jokes. Right. And I still got paid. It was outside of Chicago. It was in the suburbs. <laughs> I still got paid, but then I didn't even try stand up for another like year and a half after that because I was like. Ugh. I was like, people don't listen. I was really scared. And so I just focused on like the monologue shows. Mm -hmm. And and then I started hosting a show at uh, Mad River. Remember Mad River in Chicago? Rings a bell. I yeah. think it was after, after I had left maybe. Yeah. It's just like this was tiny it? stage. Um, Sheffield. Sheffield and something. In the river? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, it was super interesting having to figure out how to how to make comedy happen, if that makes any sense. Cause mm -hmm. like, you know, you think about it and you're like, yeah, I want to do that thing, but you don't really know where to start. And like the MC gigs are a great gateway, but I think I, I think I have, was definitely guilty of thinking I was way funnier than I was way too soon. Yeah. And then by year three or four, I was like, I hate everything that I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. And then like flush it all down the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, I listened to recently to my first uh, CD, recorded on a mini disc player oh my on a God. back table at Knuckleheads at the Mall of America, featuring for who? The great Chad Daniels. 
Oh, nice. And uh, <gasps> oh, Chad. And he's uh, so fucking great. And um, <clears throat> you know, I gotta say, it's uh, it wasn't at all funny, <laughs> but uh, but I sold it, and the structure wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. So and, how long of a uh, tape was it? Thirty. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I broke it up. It was a couple different sets. It was fifteen minutes, fifteen minutes, and then there was just one story. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably maybe 35 minutes total. I had a couple CDs there where I was, I didn't want to sell t-shirts. Yeah. That, that was beneath me or something. You know, yeah. Or whatever. Merch. I, I stand by that. Yeah. I don't want to sell t-shirts. How many that. albums have you put out so far? Well, it's, I had two CDs, but then I, I've, and then nobody wants CDs anymore. No. And I'm not going to pay for CDs. No. I mean, you can kind of just do your own thing now and put out like. Because yeah. even music works that way now. It's just singles. You know, you can just yeah. put out, you, you can go to Sirius and put yeah. out, you know, everybody's got a channel where they just want to play like one chunk of a joke anyway. Yeah, I have three, I have three albums, mm -hmm. dig, three digital release albums and a single. Yeah. Um, that I just put out there and I'm, I'll, I'll have a new single out in the mid, middle of next year. I just released this last album, Preferred Customer. It's on uh, iTunes, Amazon, and everywhere else that you consume Music Amazing or comedy on the internet. What is your favorite project that you've done recently? Do I'm, have... I'm really proud of this new album. Yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, yeah, you should be. Like nobody, no, no, you know, I don't have. I'm. I mean, I've had last year was a great year for me. I got to do check me out on Maniac on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, so I'm really proud of that. Um, but I don't have an agent. Oh shit! I don't have an agent. I don't even have a commercial agent. I don't have a manager. Um, and I, you know, that's not how you do this. It's not recommended. And I don't, you know, I want an agent. Here's, I'm looking for representation. <laughs> Here's but the I, thing though. You need the right person. Cause like you do, you can't just go with, I've had, I've had bad experiences. I've learned a lot from, from really smart people, but mm -hmm. you know, pr uh, professionally, like, you know, for whatever reason, the, the relationship just, just didn't work out, had shortcomings and, and we parted ways, you know, a couple of times that's happened to me, but, um, I guess I just benefit from starting from having been in the game for long enough yeah. where I have enough relationships to sustain myself. And I also have enough, like releasing my own content has really saved me. Well, and it's smart too. I mean, it's smart to contain, like to have ownership of stuff because I mean, that was the way Louie did it for a long time on his yeah. website. And it's, it's very, it's smart because it's more affordable for the consumer right? and you get a hundred percent of it yeah. or however you want to break it down. But that's what I, I was talking to another, um, me and another comedian are, um, we just created a series that's going to debut on Instagram is starting next year Nice. because there's just, you know, there's just so many platforms for content now. And that's where we find that most people watch our things. And so, um, we got it greenlit from a production company and we're, that's you know, great. we're going at it, but we're, we were just like, let's just create something small form that we have, you know, that's, can, a, that's that how you expand. get eyeballs on that. But we, we were both talking about, cause I create all my own tours. Mm -hmm. Like I've done anywhere that I've wanted to travel. Like I'm doing my own tour in Europe next year. Wow. So, I mean, I just, you know, and I've done the Caribbean three times because I just like want to go to those places. So I just talked to like a small theater, not even clubs per se, like a small theater uh -huh. and, and get some like good locals that'll with the Caribbean. I just did a one person thing because there's not any comics there. Yeah. Um, and I'm putting together one next year that is on a catamaran. So like we'd stop in a bunch of islands and like do, com they don't have comedy there. Everybody comes. Even if you're, even if an island has 80 people that live on it, they'll all come out to see a comedy show. Shut the fuck up. It's really cool. And I do it all myself. What's the most, what's the most remote place you've ever booked a comedy show? St. John. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I got a buddy that works in St. John. That's crazy. You should come and do it. I mean, I'm putting, I'm, I'm, I'm building something really cool because, and even next year I was like, God, you know, I really enjoy this travel portion of doing stand up and being able to like hone something that can work in another place because Europe is going to be a big challenge. I have no idea if I'll fit there. Uh -huh. Like, you know, their, their sense of humor is so different in every country, but I'm doing one headlining night in Scotland, one headlining night in Prague. And then the rest, I'm just doing kind of like 20 minute sets, a bunch of places that I found. Awesome. Um, just to just dip my toe in it and see how it goes. But 
I ended up finding this travel company and I partnered with them for next year. So like they're covering all these, they don't have any other comics doing that. So I'm like, for that kind of stuff, you don't need an agent. Like my agents don't help me with that shit, you know? Smart. And it's way cooler to do. And and you get to keep all the proceeds. I mean, you know, and as even with Scotland, I was talking to the club owner and I was like, I have no idea what my draw in Scotland's going to be. Mm-hmm. Let's aim low. <laughs> let's mm-hmm. go for, cause he has like three different sizes of theaters. I was like, let's do a 50 seater dude. Let's and make it feel packed, you know, sure. and make it so it's standing room only. And then it will, then it'll feel like a great show. And then maybe the next time I can do like, you know, a little bit bigger of one, but that's the way you got to do it now because the, like, unless you're selling out amphitheaters, yeah. no agents even care. No, they're not really, they're not really checking for you. It's, um, it is, you, you know, it is, uh, it's a hustle. It's a hustle. <laughs> it's a hustle. I've been lucky enough. I, you know, I get work from comedians. Usually you get work from your agent. I, I've been, I've, I've been lucky enough over the years to get work from comedians and, and I prefer it that way. Yeah. To be honest with you, just because, I don't know, just to me, it means more. Yeah, exactly. Well, on that note, what do you have coming up that you want to plug? And, uh, and yeah, all the holiday shows and your podcast, all that jazz. If you're in Madison over the holidays or in the Wisconsin, South Central Wisconsin area, <laughs> uh, Brink Lounge, December 21st and 22nd, Friday and Saturday, just before Christmas. Um, come on down. I will be there. Um, the Visitor's Locker Room, you can find that at my website. We're on SoundCloud. Um I'll put it on all your all your preferred platforms shortly. We're just uh, getting that show back up and running. I was telling you about it. It's a long-standing Chicago institution. That's um, awesome. Yeah, as little sports as possible. Believe me. <laughs> uh, and then, um, and then I don't know. I'll be uh, I'll be doing Sketchfest in San Francisco in January. I'll be at Go Bananas in Cincinnati in February. Um, and please check out Preferred Customer. I'm very proud of it. I did a Dynasty typewriter right down the road oh, I here. I love that place. And um, the crowd was awesome. Uh, I'm really proud of it. And I would love uh, would love for people to hear it. Hell yeah. And how can people find you on social? Hype Man on Twitter, Nate Craig Live on That's Instagram. And I'm... NateCraig.com. NateCraig.com. And I'm NPH Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow the podcast at Future Role Model on Instagram or at Role Model Pod on Twitter. You can follow the Comedy Pop-Up Network at Comedy Pop-Up or at CPU Podcast. Follow all the podcasts that are on here. Everybody's amazing and talented comedians. (laughs) And... Oh, right. What else? Yeah, this is about... 